Hey there, so Utah is often overlooked for one of the amazing places here in the United States, but today we're gonna to be chatting a little bit about some of the pros and cons about living in Salt Lake City, Utah, and we're gonna hop into it right now. here welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel if this is your very first time here this channel is literally everything you need to know about eating working playing sleeping and living in the Salt Lake City Utah area if that is of interest to you consider subscribing down below and tap the bell for notifications so that you are notified every time we drop our weekly videos we hear from people like you all the time who are relocating or looking to make a move here to the Salt Lake City, Utah area, and we absolutely love it. So if you are thinking about making a move in a month, in six months, or even a year from now, feel free to give us a call, shoot us a text, or send us an email, and it would be our absolute pleasure to connect with you. Hey there, so today we are going to be chatting a little bit about some of the pros and cons of living in Salt Lake City, Utah. It doesn't feel like that many years ago that my husband and I and our four kids were contemplating moving from California to Utah. And I remember us telling some people and we were like, so we're thinking about moving to Utah. And they were like, what? Why are you moving to Salt Lake? Like you're in California. Like it doesn't get much better than this. And we're like, well, there's a lot of really good things about Utah and I think we're ready for a change of pace. And they're like, are you kidding me? I'm like, no, no, seriously. So I'm gonna share with you some of the pros that we noticed here in Utah. And then some of the things, maybe disadvantages or things that maybe you should just be aware of if you are thinking about making a move or relocating or you're kind of on the fence and you're like, I don't know, I keep hearing about Utah, but I'm not really sure if it's the place for me. So. Pro number one for living in Salt Lake City or in around the suburbs of Salt Lake City is simply the job opportunities and the economy. The economy here in Utah is very strong. There is a very low unemployment rate, less than 3%, and just a lot of diversity with different jobs that are you know really welcoming small businesses you've got the tech industry that is outside of salt lake city right in lehigh they call it the silicon slopes named after the silicon valley in california and just a big te tech industry you've got places like um, facebook and visa and ancestry.com and just a lot of big businesses are bringing their you know their companies here to utah so very strong economy, strong job market, which is bringing in a lot of people. So that is number one. Number two, moving right along is honestly just the beauty, the views, the scenery, and all, you know, really just the national parks, the state parks, the local parks, the beauty that Utah has to offer. Now, one of the things when we moved here from California, we were actually in Southern California, and we had never been to a lot of the national parks that are here in Utah. So I remember telling Eric, my husband, I was like, all right, so first things first, as, as we are road tripping from Southern California to Utah, we are going to hit some of those national parks. And so it's exactly what we did when we, we road tripped up here and we hit Zion first. We were coming from San Diego. So we went, we hit Zion. And then after we went to Zion, we ended up going over to, um, to Moab, which I believe it was like an hour and a half away or so. So we did Zion in a day or two. And then we headed up to Moab. We ended up going to Arches National Park which is right in Moab. And then also in Moab is Canyonlands. And so we ended up hitting those three in one trip. I don't know, I think we spent maybe five days exploring the different parks that trip, but just having a chance to enjoy the scenery, enjoy the beauty, each one is so different. And I remember going to Zion and the kids, we got to take like a shuttle bus and everything around, you park and then you hop on the bus and it'll take you from place to place. And the kids were like, this is so fun. It's so incredible. And then we end up going to Arches and they were like, okay, now this is my favorite national park. We couldn't even get them out. There's a arch called Sand Dune Arch. 
and it is kind of what it sounds like, but it's a big arch. And then there's all this just fine, fine sand that's at the bottom of the arch. I mean, we were probably at Sand Dune Arch for at least an hour and the kids are just playing in there and it was so, so fun. Canyonlands was awesome. It was a little bit buggy when we ended up going, but it was still a really cool thing to see. So the beauty that is here in Utah is something that is certainly next level, that's for sure. Number three, Utah is perfect for the outdoors. It kind of goes along with the beauty, but perfect if you are an outdoorsy person. Now, my family, we actually felt like we were a really outdoorsy family and we, you know, love doing things outdoor until we came here to Utah and we we're like, oh, <laughs> there's a lot of people that are way more outdoorsy than we are. And it has been so fun to like compare different things of like, okay, so what did you think when you went to this park? Okay, what did you do when you went here? And how was, you know, and so just getting other people's feedback and scoop and their experiences doing different outdoorsy things here. Like for example, when we came out here, we were like, okay, we know we want to get our kids into skiing. We know we want to, you know, that one, that is a direction we certainly want to go. So I started asking some of our friends like, okay, so what are some of the best ski resorts? Where do you guys like to take your family? What, you know, and so, uh, and we actually just kind of went, we, we park hopped, if you will, but for different ski resorts, kind of just trying out like, okay, what is this one like? What is this one like? And a lot of them offer kids ski free. They have fourth, fifth, sixth grade passes where kids get to ski free at several of the different, um, the different resorts, which is so cool. So you kind of get that sampler experience where you can go to a lot of the different resorts. You can try it out for a day or two or whatever. So that was really cool. Um, we've got, you know, we already rented our skis for the year for, you know, usually typically you can start renting. If you want to do a ski rental, they'll do ski rental packages all around Salt Lake City. And of course in Utah County and up in Wasatch near Park City, they'll do a, basically like a season long ski rental and you can start renting skis in September. Sure, there's no snow. My kids were like, mommy, why are we renting skis in September? It's not even gonna snow for another couple months. I'm like, but here's the thing, here's a pro tip. Pro tip is that get your ski rentals early because if you wait for the first snowfall, they're gone. <laughs> or at least the selection of things that you may want are very, very limited. I know that from experience because we tried that the first year and I was like, oh, it's snowing, great, let's go get our ski rentals. And then I quickly realized, oh wait, everybody else has the exact same idea. So this year we got ours in September. We had so many to pick from. It was extremely affordable. Our kids got their ski rentals for the entire season for $75. And a lot of those too, you can use that credit if you want. If you actually just want to purchase the package, they'll let you do that too. Um, but that's kind of a cool thing as well is, you know, and you have it from September to, I believe the first weekend in May or the very end of April. So you get it for a very long time. My kids are growing so fast. So every year they're different size feet and skis and all of that. So that has been something that has been amazing. And just the outdoors here, the skiing, the snowboarding, the hiking, the kayaking, the biking, my kids, there's a pond that's really close to our house. My kids love, like they'll say, mommy, mommy, can we take the kayaks out? It's like, yeah, okay, let's go take the kayaks out. They've got little beachy areas that are right there. Some of these ponds and reservoirs are pretty small too, which actually makes it for me as a parent. I love that because I can, I can see them really close as opposed to sometimes when we were at the beach, I'm like, okay, my kids are all right here, but then the currents, you know, carrying them down farther and farther. And I'm going, okay, wait a second. They were just here and now they're over here with these ponds and reservoirs. A lot of times you can keep a better eye on them, which is so nice. And then of course the bike riding here, they've got mountain biking and then just paved trails of just trail biking. There's a lot of electric bikes out here. Outdoors are huge. Number four, living here in the Salt Lake City area is just the competitive cost of living. Now, I know compared to a lot of the surrounding states, 
depending on where you are coming from, I've had a lot of clients reach out and say, hey, I'm coming from you know, the East Coast. Oh, I'm coming from the West Coast. Oh, I'm coming from here and here. And I'm looking at the, I'm looking at numbers and it looks like Utah might be a better fit from where I'm coming from. Utah has a flat tax rate as well. So 4.95% across the board. So depending on your income levels, you know, and depending on the state that you're coming from, that might be a good thing or it may not be a good thing for you. I know coming from California, you know, my husband and I, we were throwing a party because we were like, oh my goodness, <laughs> our tax rates just changed significantly. So that was awesome. And then, you know, if you've got a family and kids and stuff, I know for me personally, the cost of activities to sign my kids up for piano or for golf or tennis or all the different things, soccer, my, all of my kids play soccer. And for, you know, here I was able to sign three of them up for the price that I was able to sign one up for in California. So again, just cost of living here. Yes, prices have continued to go up, which is obviously with the economy and inflation and all of that. But considerably speaking, it is a lower cost of living than a lot of the different surrounding states. So that is certainly a pro for many people. And number five pro for living in the Salt Lake City, Utah area is just the excellent schools, excellent school systems, a lot of, you know, the universities and colleges that are nearby too, lots of different educational opportunities to pick from. I know years ago when my husband was finishing up grad school here, I, I had gotten my degree in education. I got my master's degree in education. And so I'm a big, big proponent of education. And while he was finishing up grad school, I was teaching elementary school out here. And I remember interviewing at some different places and I ended up landing a job at a charter school teaching third grade. And it was my second year teaching. And I just remember like, oh my goodness. It was honestly, I taught, I ended up actually teaching for 15 years. And that year teaching here in Utah was hands down my favorite year teaching just the parent support, the administrators, the teacher staff, the curriculum that they gave us was really next level. They sent us to a conference in Pennsylvania where we really got to be hands on and deep dive into all the curriculum that we were learning and going to be teaching. And we did that in the summer. Just a lot of the resources and things that they give the educators for me personally, again, I can only speak from personal experiences, but I felt like <clears throat> the education system here in Utah, the things that I'm looking at, like my children, they've got, <laughs> it was cute, the, just this the other day, I'm driving the kids, carpooling the kids to school, and one of the kids says, oh, I'm so excited, you know, today our, today our specialty is STEM lab. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I said, what's tomorrow? And they're like, I've got music tomorrow. I've got art on the next day. I've got computer lab on the next day. So just really art and computers and STEM and just a lot of these different programs that they are offering is for me. And again, I was an educator in California for many years too. And so for me, I look at it, I'm like, wow, we didn't have a STEM lab. Wow, we didn't have art or we didn't have a lot of these different things. And I'm thinking this is very nice and a real benefit for our kids and for just you know everybody around and my daughter she was saying the other day she's like mommy i'm so excited to take asl next year and i was like oh my gosh they offer american sign language at their school and i just thought that's really cool because i didn't end up taking asl until i was in college and it's such a cool language so just some of these different languages and some of the different things that they are offering are very awesome so yes, there are so many pros to living in Salt Lake City, but let's talk about a few of the cons. Now, number one con, and I know a lot of people have said this, that we're thinking about moving here. They were like, Mariah, I think I may have just been priced out of Utah because the economy and the housing the, really has significantly increased over the years. And so some people are thinking like, yeah, you know what, actually I'm ready to make the move to Utah, but now I don't know if I can actually afford making the move to Utah. Well, 
depending, again, depending on where your job is, depending on what area you're in, is obviously going to depend on the cost of living and just the home situation. So really sometimes the closer you are to downtown Salt Lake City and those surrounding areas, it's going to be a little bit more expensive. Same thing, like if you're looking in Park City, Park City is gonna be a lot more expensive than it is if you are in some of the surrounding cities around Park City. Um, same thing goes for you know a lot of these different communities. If you are able to get out in some of the suburbs, there is usually something for everybody whether you're looking for a single family residence or a condo or a townhome, generally speaking, I just had a couple of reach outs this week. People had called and they were like, hey, so here's my situation. I'm not even sure if I should be renting first or buying first. I don't even know if I can get into something. So I gave them a couple names of lenders that I've worked with. It's like, hey, you know what? Why don't we crunch these numbers, see if that even is going to make sense for you, and then kind of go from there. So. A con, again, is just the increase in housing prices, but generally speaking, most people that have reached out, we have been able to find them something. Number two, a con for some people. I actually know for me, this is not a con, but I know some people feel like, eh, it's kind of a negative. There are a lot of large open rural spaces, just like where I'm standing right now. You will see large fields. Sometimes when you are driving in Utah, there are just fields and fields and fields and it feels like you go on for miles and you don't see anything. And it is, you know, a, more of a desert here, even though it, you look around, you're like, wait, this is a desert? Um, the, it is dry. And so some of those open, large spaces, some people are like, gosh, it's kind of boring. It's just kind of flat around here. And then you've got the mountains over here. For me, more open space, the better. So again, for some people, that's a pro. Some people, it's a con. Same thing for number three, that flat tax rate that we had talked about before. For some people moving from out of state, they're like, oh, wait a minute, you have a flat tax rate. Like for some, some obviously states don't have an income tax or don't have a state tax or don't have some of those other different taxes. And so for some people moving in, they're like, oh, wait, I'm actually having to pay a lot more than I was having to pay in other places. So depending on your tax situation, depending on your job situation, that may be a pro, it may be a con. I know from us moving from California, we were throwing a party. My husband's a tax accountant, so he was crunching numbers and of course like, oh boy, like this is a game changer. Um, but again, for everybody and their tax situation, it, it's different. Number four, I don't usually like to talk about politics or religion, but let's talk about both of them. So, so for some people, this is a pro. For some, this is a con. Now, I know, actually, this is funny. When we were living in California, uh, one of my neighbors, she, we ended up talking, became really good friends, and found out, she's like, oh, I grew up in Draper, Utah. And I was like, oh, really? That's awesome. How was it? And she's like, it was great. I think I was the only, I think we, she's like, I think we were the only family that did not belong to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, also known as Mormons. She's like, I'm pretty sure we were the only family on that whole entire street. But she's like, everybody was super nice to us. So she's like, I just feel like Utah and religion, there it comes up all the time, whether you kind of want it or not it will come up. Some people have really, really positive experiences with it. Some people have more negative experiences with it. But for me personally, I've heard a lot of positive. Um, it's not uncommon for people to ask you, hey, are you a member of the church? Or hey, are you a member? They're not talking about the country club. They're not talking about, but they're asking like, hey, are you part of this religion here? However, Utah is becoming more diverse right in Salt Lake City, you're looking at 50% or lower that are members of the Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints. Some of the surrounding suburbs and communities obviously will have a lot more um, members of that faith, but religion definitely plays a role just really in the culture because it was founded by Mormon pioneers. Um, so there, a lot of the roots are kind of deeply rooted in that. And you'll notice that a lot of smaller, I don't want to say boutique, but kind of like boutique, small, small family owned restaurants, shops. A lot of those are all closed on Sunday. So if you come here on Sunday and you're like, 
I can't wait to go to my favorite milkshake shack or I can't wait to whatever. There's a good chance if it's not a large chain that it will probably be closed on Sunday and it kind of just goes back to those religious beliefs and roots that are here in Utah. So again, just some different things to consider if you are thinking about, oh, I don't know, maybe Utah's the place for me, maybe it's not. Just weigh those pros and cons. It may be a good fit, it may not be a good fit, but only you would be able to know. So if you're thinking about making a move or relocating, schedule a trip to come out here. Give us a call, shoot us a text or send us an email. And if you give us a couple of like specifics of like, hey, I need to be within 10 minutes of the airport. Hey, I'm looking for top-notch school districts. I am looking for, you know, whatever it is that you are looking for specifically. Tell us a few things you're looking for. Tell us a few things that you, you know, are deal breakers. And we will be able to find a spot for you that hopefully will fit you and your family's needs. So again, feel free to give us a call, shoot us a text and send us an email. And it would be our pleasure to connect with you. Take care and have a great one. Bye.